What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and this is the Anki NC400. They claim it can see in the dark in full color, but is that enough to make it a good camera? Let's find out. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, Anki did send me this camera to review, but they have no control over this video, and all of the opinions in this video are my own. So, in the box, you get the instruction manual, mounting hardware, a sticker, and the camera itself. Now, Anki also sent me this long-ass wire, but you won't get this in the retail packaging, so... Now, for comparison, I'll be using a UDM Pro with the G3 Flex camera, and the NC400 is connected to my Synology running surveillance station. Now this is a 1440p, 20fps security camera with full color night vision. It's made entirely of metal and feels like you could hit it with a bat and it would be fine. Whereas the G3 Flex is made entirely of plastic and I wouldn't want to drop it during installation. Getting into the initial setup of both cameras, the Unify Protect system was much easier and faster to set up. It only requires plugging in the camera and clicking add device in the devices page. The Anki camera requires a more involved setup process. First you have to download Anki's SADP tool to find the cameras and activate them. Now activating the camera simply requires setting up an administrator password, there's no internet or cloud requirement to speak of. In line with this, I can happily say that in my two days of Wireshark capturing, this camera only sent data to my desktop and my Synology, so it's not phoning home to the Chinese government or anybody else. Getting back to that administrator password though that you have to set up, the password requirements are a little bit strange. And by strange, I mean just completely broken. It says you need to use two of the following, lowercase letters, capital letters, special characters, and numbers. And when they say two of the following, they mean two of the following. You can only use two. Not one, not three, two. So I couldn't make the password capital password one, two, three, four, five, or password one exclamation point. But I could make it password one, two, three, four, five, or capital cool capital password. Now, I have no idea what the heck these ass backwards password requirements are. When I asked Anki, what the heck is this about? They said it's to improve security, but I have no idea how that improves security. Now, this isn't the end of the world because you should always be putting your security cameras and NVRs on their own dedicated network. So that way they have no external access aside from maybe port forwarding your NVR. Now, after you create your oddly complicated password, you can set up the camera's IP address. Then you can go to the camera's web GUI by typing in the IP address into your browser and logging in with the password you just set up. When you log in, you can change all the camera settings and importantly set up ONVIF, which requires a different password, but the ONVIF password doesn't have the dumb requirements that the administrator password does. But once you enable ONVIF, it can be added into surveillance station with no problem. Now, getting into image quality, out of the box and indoors, I could only really describe the image as mediocre. They sharpen the image way too much, and if you were trying to use this camera to, you know, check if your employee is on his phone slacking off from across the room, you would have a difficult time telling. Now things only get worse for the NC400 at night, especially when you pair it against the $50 less expensive G3 Flex camera. With its default settings, you can't even tell that it's snowing out. These were recorded at the exact same time. I mean, look at this. The biggest killer for the NC400 is its default shutter speed being set to 1 12th of a second. Now if you're in the video world, you know that your shutter speed should typically be at 180 degrees, or twice your frame rate. So I'm recording this video right now at 30 frames a second, so my shutter speed is set to 1 60th of a second. Therefore we get a nice, fluid, nice, natural looking motion blur. I know typically films are shot at 24 frames a second, I prefer 30 FPS, so that's what I'm doing here. but. Again, twice the frame rate as your shutter speed, and it looks nice. Now the NC400 having a default shutter speed out of the box of 1 12th of a second, combined with being recorded by my Synology at 20 frames a second, means that about 40% of the time, I start to blend in with the background. And the rest of the time, I'm just a blurry mess, leaving massive streaks on the image. This is unacceptable performance. This camera is getting its butt handed to it by the G3 Flex, which cost $50 less. At this point, out of the box, that's what I would recommend. But we don't have to use the out of the box settings. So I'm gonna reset the NC400 to default settings, and let's jump into the computer and take a look at the recommended settings that I would use to make this image much cleaner. Okay, so our checklist of things we need to do in the settings is, first of all, we need to disable the LED on the camera. The LED right here. So this thing seemingly turns on at random regardless of the sensitivity, even in the same lighting conditions with nothing changing, the light would turn on and off randomly. And right now in a brightly lit room, it's 
still on for some reason. And when it is on, if somebody gets close to the camera, well, their face becomes washed out. So I guess we'll never know who stole my patio chair five feet away from the camera. So the second thing we have to do is clean up the OSD. I'm not a big fan of the OSD built into the camera with the camera name and all that stuff. So we're gonna go in there and clean that up. The third thing we need to do is turn down the image sharpening and noise reduction settings because as we've seen before, the default settings are pretty bad. And last but not least, we need to change the camera shutter speed. So that way I'll stop blending in with the background and leaving massive blurry streaks all over the place. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in the camera's IP address here so that way we can get connected to the camera itself. I'm gonna use my username and password, admin, and then my password. And the GUI is pretty unoptimized and doesn't really work well. It doesn't display the live preview well in Google Chrome unless you download their plugin. I'm not gonna do that because I don't plan on keeping this camera in deployment for very long here. So we can come in here to the configuration System settings, we can rename the camera. Let's just call it NC400. Save that change and we can come down to network. This is all of our network settings so we can change all of this to what we need. If we wanna use DHCP, I'm running mine off of a manual IP address. Uh, you can also test the IP address just to make sure that it works. This is a nice feature to have to make sure that you're not double assigning your IP addresses. But what we really care about here is video and audio. First thing that we're gonna do is change the video encoding to H.264. Now, changing this to H.264 will allow the Synology surveillance station to actually display the live preview to me in a browser without requiring me to download the footage and then bring it into something like VLC. So we're gonna use H.264, apply that, make sure that our frame rate's at 20, which it is, and we can change all of our different resolution settings here, but I'm gonna leave it at 1440p. Now, here is our smoothing. This is our image smoothing image sharpening thing here. So I'm gonna bring this down to 12, call that a day. We're gonna come over here to image, OSD settings, and give this a second to load. Okay, it's not loading. So um, yeah, welcome to the Anki GUI. So let's refresh the page here. All right, here we have it. So I'm gonna turn off the display week I'm gonna just leave the display date and I can turn off the camera name. But if I wanted to leave the camera name on, you can change all that formatting stuff here and create your own text overlay. So if I wanna say, hello, I can do that. And that'll put it right up here, up at the top. You can move things around in the OSD, which is really cool. So you can do custom positioning. You could put the date in the dead center if you wanted. Not sure why you'd wanna do that, but you can. You could, you know, put your stuff in the corners change it however you want. I really appreciate this as a feature, but for right now, I'm just gonna disable all of the OSD stuff. You can also change the color modes, the alignments, all of that stuff. So it's actually a pretty complete OSD and I'm very happy with it in that respect, but I wanna come over here to these display settings here and we're gonna come down to exposure settings. Exposure settings, we're gonna change the exposure time to 1 30th of a second. So when recording at 20 FPS, it shouldn't be leaving massive blurry streaks on the image and everything should be nice and smooth. Now we're gonna come down to day and night switch, turn on supplemental light mode to off, and that will disable the LED at the front of our camera, which as you can see is now off. We're gonna come down to image enhancement, noise reduction level, and I'm gonna bring this down to 15. We can come to video adjust, we can mirror the image, rotate it, Change the video standard, whether you're in Europe or the US and you need to use PAL or NTSC. I'm in the US, so I'm using NTSC. And that's about it for the GUI. That's pretty much all the changes that we need to make to clean up the image. So now let's see what our changes have actually done. Taking a look at our outdoor image, we got rid of the motion blur, but as you can see, we still have hot spots on my face. The camera is boosting the brightness so much that it doesn't know how to handle something that's already pretty bright. My face is a lot brighter than everything else in the scene here, aside from the window in the background. So the camera doesn't know how to handle that. So once I step back, you can see that my face becomes a lot more clear. But overall, we have a lot of noise in the image, and as an outdoor camera, I can't recommend the NC400. But let's take a look at the indoor performance, because that was also pretty bad before. As you can see here, my face became a lot clearer. It's not over sharpening everything, and you can tell that I'm talking to my dog. You can see my dog move, see her react, and 
I would say this is a very clean image. So for $130, you're getting a pretty good 1440p indoor camera. And that's really the only place I see this camera being useful. So Anki's claims of being able to see full color night vision, yeah, maybe if you're recording it at 5 FPS, but I don't like doing that, so there's no way I can recommend this as a good camera for outdoor performance. And I'm pretty disappointed with Anki trying to claim that it can see full color at night. Because any camera can see full color at night. This is my main camera outdoors. All I had to do was increase the ISO and then smother it with noise reduction. The image turns to total garbage, just like the NC400. So if my nice full frame camera here can't perform well at night, then there's really no hope for a camera with a sensor that's an eighth the size. So if you want some ONVIF cameras for outdoors, if you're using something like Surveillance Station instead of like the Unify Protect system, I would recommend Anki's C800 camera, the turret variety specifically. I've used that camera before on installations. I've used it at a few bars. They're fantastic cameras. They see traditional monochrome at night because they're using IR LEDs instead of simply just boosting the brightness on the regular image at night. So that's what I would recommend for at night. But if you need a decent indoor camera, the NC400 is pretty good, but overall, I can't recommend it for outdoor use. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe if you're not already. I will leave purchase links in the description to everything I talked about in this video, and while you're down there, let me know in the comments. What are you using? Are you using the Unify Protect system? Are you using any Anki cameras? Or is there anything else that I should take a look at? But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.